everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 14 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, where I'm making myself a rain shield, because nuts to all this rain, and you're going in here with all this other junk, because I've just got, this is where I put all kinds of random stuff. Hello, rain shield. Goodbye, rain. I love it. I love it. So you can see it's still like a little cloudy, so you know it's raining, quote unquote, but the rain shield does a nice job of uh, getting rid of the sound and getting rid of the particles. Which, you know, to me, I think that's cool. I love the rain shield. Such a good, just such a good little quality of life thing. Like, the sometimes, you know, you've got these large, grandiose mods like Ars Nouveau that have, like, progression and, like, a thousand things added to the mod. And other times, you have this mod that adds one little cool thing, and you're like, yeah, that mod is 100% worth having in a pack. Rain shield is a personal favorite of mine. I mean, you know, up to you. Uh, so... What am I up to? That's a good question. Uh, I need a quicker way to get between my base and 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 my Ars Nouveau tower and some of my future bases. So we're gonna come up with a solution to that at some point. Uh, I'm thinking travel anchors because I like those. And ironically, I've mentioned this before, but there's actually two travel anchors now. So Ender IO back in the day had an item called the travel anchor or, or a block called the travel anchor and an item called the staff of traveling. And it was so cool. Uh, but then Ender IO hasn't been updated for a long time. Uh, so somebody was like, hey, speaking of having, you know, a, a mod that's dedicated to one block or item, I made a Travel Anchors mod, right? Some Somebody, I don't know who it was, but made a Travel Anchors mod. And it's literally just a replica of that thing, right? Uh, so they're both in the pack, so you can pick which one you want. Like, So the thing with the Travel Anchor is it requires getting a Pulsating Crystal, which is a lot of Ender Pearls and stuff. And then the travel, the Staff of Traveling requires an Ender what was it called again? Vibrant Crystal? No, uh, Ender Crystal, which requires like the soul of an Enderman and a whole bunch of progression into Ender IO. So if you want to go into the Ender IO progression route, you can make those that way. Uh, if you want to go the route of uh, not the whole Ender IO progression, just get access to this, you can make it this way. Um, I haven't gone that deep into Ender IO yet, but I should soon. So we'll see which one I decide to go with. But for now, I want to get this up and running. Um, so one thing I'd like to do is automate this bad boy. And that's what I'm going to do right about now uh, with 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 laser IO. Does that sound like a plan? I didn't want to break you necessarily, but eh, whatever. OK, so your job uh, will be to automate this with laser IO. And I'm going to do this with a nice little little setup here. Boop, 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 boop. OK, uh, so you're going to let's actually clear you guys out and get ourselves a little laser. You're gonna bind to here and here, and then you're gonna bind to here and here. Um, and talking about the laser networking colors, we can make this kind of whatever we want. So maybe we'll make it like green. Does that sound cool? Yeah, that's a neat look. And one note about the lasers, um, you can also adjust the alpha of the lasers so that uh, if you do that and then hit apply, like I should have, you'll notice the lasers are a lot more pronounced. Um, whereas if you make the alpha really small, it'll be like barely visible. You can even make them completely invisible if you want by making the alpha zero. And then you won't see the lasers at all between it. Um, but what you can also do is have a wrench alpha. Uh, I'll make it like 255 to max it out. What it does is it takes whatever the alpha is and adds the wrench alpha when you're holding a wrench in your hand. Ha ha! How cool is that? So when you have the wrench, you can see the lasers when you don't have the wrench. A lot of people wanted this. Uh, I personally like seeing, you know, it all the time, right? And the default button just changes you back to whatever the defaults would have been, right? Um, so I'll go with green for this guy. That that seems cool to me. Um, and then I should probably build and gadget my way. Well, probably not yet, because I think these are full-size blocks, so I won't be able to get to the node unless I, unless I uh, leave them broken for a minute. So what I want to do is um, on the up of this guy... We want to extract items, right? I want to extract, do I want to filter this? Uh, I'm guessing lapis uh, and technically amethyst is allowed. So we'll do that too. Uh, we'll throw amethyst shards in there uh, and you're going to extract on orange. Okay. Uh, and then I want you to insert on magenta. Is that cool? Yeah, that should be cool. And then on the up here, you're going to insert on orange extract on magenta. Okay. Cool. So that if I throw um, Lapis in here, he should transfer his items appropriately, 
right? So you're... On the up. All right, set you to extract. Don't forget that part. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, and then on the up. All oh, right, and then on the insert here, I want to filter you to be source gems. Cool. Okay, perfect. So then up here, we will insert on orange, extract on magenta. On the up here, we will insert on orange. Extract on magenta. And then on the up here, we will insert on orange, extract on magenta. Cool. So what that should do for us is fully automate uh, the source gems. So it'll extract the source gem and then put a new lapis in there so that basically put lapis or amethyst in here, get source gem made. Um, and as a reminder, you can totally throw a source jar nearby and it'll uh, drain from the source jar to speed up. Look how much faster it's crafting them now, uh, even with without tick accelerating. Like it really speeds it up. That said, my personal opinion is um, it drains a little bit much on the way of source. Like it, it definitely speeds things up, that's for sure. But it really gobbles up that source very quickly. I would, I would like to see this cost a little bit less because there's a lot of things you can use source for. Um, but that's a personal preference of mine. No big deal. Uh, and obviously source is easy peasy to get lots of. Um, so yeah, don't, don't worry too much about it. All right, let's, let's fix this. So you, and then you, and then you, and then you. And that looks pretty solid to me. Cool, right? So you'll just sit there and passively make these, slowly but surely, getting the job done. Uh, speaking of slowly but surely, uh, we're also generating copious amounts of source up here, which is sweet. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just break one of these bottles and place a new one, and you can see that all happening. Um, and obviously we have a decent amount of stored solar panel stuff, so that looks good to me. So let's go home, probably, uh, do I wanna sleep through the night? You know what, no, I wanna go hunt. Uh, I'm gonna see one more attempt off camera to find uh, some stuff. And if I find it, cool. If not, Wildens, I mean. Uh, if not, that's fine, right? And we'll come back in a few minutes after I've done a little off-camera looking for Wildens and or probably Endermen, because I would like a couple more Ender Pearls too. All right, so I'll be back after I do a little bit of looking for them. And after leaving my base, I discovered that it's actually raining out right now, so I guess the chances of finding Endermen are pretty low. Um, that's a bummer. So I'll look for Wilden real quick, and then I might I might double sleep um, so I can make it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that, actually. And then I'll be back. I'm going to hunt all night and hopefully find something good. If not, we're going to be summoning Wildens in a few minutes. Cool? So be right back. All right, I think I can confidently say Wildens are not spawning. I don't know why, but they're definitely not spawning in the overworld, uh, or at least near my base. There might be a there might be a, a specific biome they like to spawn in or something, but I have not had any luck with Weldens. But I did get Ender Pearls, so I can get my Travel Anchor, which I think will make my life a little bit easier. So let's get this Travel Anchor. Now it's expensive iron wise, but eh, well, we'll just have to learn to live with it, I guess, right? I do have a little bit of iron that I haven't processed yet, and hey, I do have those energetic alloys, so that's cool. That's giving me a lot of iron dust. That was that was a pretty good, pretty good dude, right? Push that into there, and now we're cool. Nice. That works. That works for me. All right. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? I think I think I want my main travel anchor to be right here, and we'll call that home lock. Is that oh hello? Right click with a stick to unlock. Okay, and you, there is no tool for breaking travel anchors. That's probably just a bug. Hopefully it doesn't destroy it. Oh, it does. Oh, that's a bug. I am cheating myself back into travel anchor because that is 100% a bug. Uh, allow cheats on, cool. And travel anchor. Yeah, that's a bug, um, this travel anchor. Travel anchors must not have a it doesn't have a tool. See, it says at the top, no tool. So that means there's like no tool that you can valid, that's valid to break it with. Can you like pick it up with a wrench of some kind? No. So the fact that there's no tool means there's no good way uh, to break this. I wonder if I can exchange it. Uh, I can try it, I'm just curious. So if I wanted you, 
I have to turn on effect tile entities. See, that's interesting. It didn't even give me the drop that way. Oh, you know what? It might have gone into the A system. Yeah, it did. Because remember, if he's bound to an applied energistic system, the items will go in there. So for now, if you have to break and replace these, uh, use an exchanging gadget. Uh, just make sure that enable tile entities is on. Cool. All right. Uh, so with that said, uh, shift right click with a stick to unlock. All right. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. Now I want to run over here. And let's call, uh, I want to know where my entryway is. I think, I think right here will be a good spot. Mage tower. And if I lock you, so if I stand on you, we should see home. And then if I jump or sneak or sneak jump, right click. There we go. Figured it out. <laughs> right click, right click. That's how we do it. And then to get around my base, like I'm going to have multiple buildings for multiple purposes. And to get around them, I will use the travel anchors. Is that cool? And it only shows the names when you're standing on it, right? So you can see when you're standing on it, you'll see. That's cool. I like it. So if I have to get home for some reason, like to smelt something because I haven't set up auto crafting yet, that's how that'll be done. And if we check over here, we should see a bunch of source. Nice. All right, it's all coming together, folks. All right, so let's get um, let's get the following made. Okay, I need an arcane core, which is going to need some source stone. I remember needing a lot of this, so let's get like a full stack of them. I feel like I'm probably going to need more, but that'll be fine. Um, so an arcane core and an enchanting apparatus are gonna be used for crafting. And to go along with this, we're going to want eight of these dudes, okay? Uh, and let's let's throw this right in the smack dab center of the room, because I feel like that's a, a good place for this to live, okay? So you're gonna want this, something like that. And that's gonna allow you to do a bunch of crafting in Ars Nouveau. And there's all kinds of information about the enchanting apparatus in here. Um, and there'll be a bunch of crafting we can do with it. In addition, you can also use this for enchanting enchanting. Um, and this is where you can get things uh, like looting on your items. So we're gonna need an earth essence to do that and some source gem blocks and some emeralds. So if I want, if I want looting three, I'm gonna need a 15-ish, right? 14, 14. 14 emeralds, that's not terrible. We can make that happen. So let's get an earth essence first, right? Earth essence, um, hey, wrong thing, okay? So you, sir, are going to be the earth essence. Um, and what I need to do is have three, four imbuement chambers, four more imbuement chambers. One, two, three, four. Oh boy, that was not what I meant to do. Oh well, life will go on. Um, and you need to have, I think you need to be around like that, okay? Um, and the excess imbuement chambers will decide what to do with in the future. Uh, so you, in order, there's a bunch of different essences from Ars Nouveau. Uh, no, essence, no, no ad symbol. And they all are crafted like so. You have uh, three adjacent imbuement chambers with one in the center. And those three adjacents have to have items on them. So for this, we need any seed, a bl uh, iron ingot, and any dirt, okay? So dirt plus seed plus ingot, okay? And you guys are gonna go in like this. And I have an idea in my head of how to do this in a cool way. Isn't this what this does? Or is it is it pedestals that go around it? Is it pedestals that go around the imbuement chamber? I thought it was, I thought it was different. It might be pedestals. Maybe it's pedestals. Let's do it this way, because I like the look of this. There's arcane platforms, which are equivalent to pedestals, that look super cool. Don't those look cool? I like those. And I think these will work. So maybe it's these guys. Okay. And then we put a source gem in the middle. And just like with turning lapis into source gems it just takes a while or you can feed it essence or you can take accelerate it oh hello not what i wanted to do there you go okay and that's how you get your earth gems 
okay? And the good news is, is it doesn't consume these three items, okay? So you can see it's very slow to process, but the good news is, is it doesn't consume the items. And again, just to clarify, if this is too slow for you, throw a source jar down and it'll speed up the process. See? Not too shabby. And this is without tick accelerating at this point because the tick accelerator wore off, okay? Now it will consume up that source pretty quickly. And by the way, a lot of this enchanting stuff over here requires source, but it's all good. Okay, that should be cool. Now you're empty. I wouldn't mind a few more source jars. Just because like, I feel like I could always use more of them. Yeah, having a few extra source jars around might not be a terrible idea. Right, so you guys are all foolish, right? And now the empty ones. And there's no reason we can't have two levels going on too, okay? Nice. So now I got 12 full source jars. That whole farm that we set up last episode, working great for the record, okay? Um, and you can kind of put these guys however you want. As long as they're nearby, it's good. Okay, cool. All right, so that looks good. And that gets me uh, the, the earth essences that I need. Now, what's a good sword that I could have that maybe won't uh, break? Would be cool. Is there like a sword that doesn't break? I feel like there might be. Um, I'm leaning towards, isn't there, an, isn't there a sword from Ars Nouveau? There is the Enchanter's Sword, can be inscribed with the spell of the Scribes Table. That seems cool. So by default, this is 7, 1.6, and 3. This is 8, 1.6, and 3. So the Enchanter's Sword is a little smidge better uh, than a Diamond Sword, okay? It's a diamond, two blocks of gold, and two source gem blocks. Okay, and gold, two blocks of gold, and a diamond. And I wonder if it's smart enough to like notice that the sword is broken or not. So we're gonna find out. So you go here, two blocks of gold and two source gems. And now that I'm actually like doing this, I'm wondering if it's a good idea to have these source things here or not, but I'm gonna do this. It doesn't look like it's gonna complain too much. And that might get me the enchanter's sword. And I'm gonna try that out. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, that looks fancy, right? Doesn't that look good? looks really good. Now I'm going to go try and get a mob with it. But in theory, it should do a smidge more damage than a vanilla diamond sword. And in addition, I'm hoping it doesn't break. If it doesn't break, that would be cool. It did take durability damage. Oh. Meh. But you know what? It repaired itself. Ha ha, look, it does. It repairs itself with mana. So I'm pretty sure what happens is these things, um, if we F3H, we'll see the uh, MBT tag, huh? Now, I guess it's not going to show me the durability of it. But uh, yes, the Enchanter's Gear will repair themselves with mana. Cool. So see how it just took a big chunk of mana? And then at the same time... Uh, yeah, it repaired the tool. That's good, right? Isn't that cool? And you can see it repairing itself as we speak. Yeah, that's what I want. I want, because I want to put looting on this and I don't want to, I will probably wind up removing looting at some point anyway, but for now, that's right, right click to activate. Right, so now if I want looting on here, um, let's see if I'm right about this. So uh, where's, where's, where's uh, enchanting? How to enchant. Um, to begin, select a level one enchantment and add some items to the pedestal. Place a jar of source nearby and use the item you want to enchant on the apparatus. The apparatus may only enchant, apply enchants that are valid to the item you have given it. To apply a level two or higher enchant, the item must already have a previous level. 
Cool. So in other words, uh, if I want looting, right, which we do, right, it's going to be an earth essence, an emerald, and six source gem blocks. Okay. So an earth essence and then some emeralds. Uh, I know I need one block for later, and then I'm going to need five of these in total. Okay. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's a very specific reason I'm doing this now. And the reason is when I fight the Wildens, I want to get a lot of their drops. Uh, because remember, you can either, if you want this Wilden tablet, uh, you can either use three of their drops to summon more Wildens, or you can use an Emerald block and Iron Sword and above. Thumbs down on this recipe up here, because Emerald blocks are expensive for me right now. Uh, that said, I can absolutely be happy with this kind of setup. And I, uh, So as long as I get three Wilden drops when I summon them, I should be able to use those to summon more and then ad nauseum and do lots and lots, right? So now I should have looting one on my Enchanter's Sword. Sweet. Uh, and then if I want looting two, it's going to be two Earth Essence, four uh, of those things, and two of these, okay? So one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, and put the sword in there, and now it's making it. And in preparation for three, it's going to be three Earth Essence, block of Emerald, and two blocks of Lapis. Okay. One, two, one, two. And then my block of emerald that I prepared in advance. And then go. And now we should have looting three on a sword that repairs itself with mana. Good times. Um now can I throw sharpness on there, you think? That would probably be smart, right? Let's see. I'm hoping that it doesn't care that there's already sharpness on it. I'm thinking it won't. I'm thinking it won't, but we'll find out. Uh, sharp, 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 sharpness. Uh, so that's going to be quartz blocks and source gem blocks. That does not seem terrible at all. And then eventually diamonds. So one, two, three, four, five diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. That can't be right. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it is right. Lapis blocks. Diamonds. And a bunch of quartz blocks, which I'll just grab the whole stack. Deal. So tier one will be two quartz source, and I'm probably going to need more source gem blocks. So let's get the lapis cooking as we speak. Okay, so you're going to do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. Good. Okay. Um, so tier one, oh, that's not what I want, was two quartz source and lapis. Two quartz. Source and Lapis, and that will in theory get Sharpness 1 on there, okay? Two Quartz, two Source and Lapis. Okay, and then two Quartz, Diamond and Lapis. Two quartz, diamond, and lapis. Two quartz, two diamond, and lapis. And then finally, two quartz, two diamond, two lapis. I'm 100% cool with that. My pet peeve with Minecraft uh, enchanting in general has always been the RNG effects of it. Like, I don't like, like, the pure RNG aspect of enchanting a lot. Because I'm like, I really just want, like, I want sharpness and looting. Don't make me spend half an hour, like, doing enchants and ripping them down. Like, ugh, it's just annoying to me. I like mods that give you a way to get what you're after, right? And now we should have looting three, sharpness five on the enchanter's sword. How cool is that? I really quite like it, actually. I really do. Sweet. Now, there's going to be way better versions of sharpness of Ill and Apotheosis, which you cannot because Ars Nouveau only handles vanilla enchants. So if you want, like, sharpness 10, which I think is possible, uh, you're going to have to go the Apotheosis route, which we will absolutely do because hilarity will ensue. But 
until we get into like massive amounts of experience, like hundreds and hundreds of levels of experience stored up, uh, we're gonna go this route, all right? So that's cool. The other cool thing about this, by the way, is you can like uh, enchant this with a spell. Uh, so any spell that you can make, I think on here, you can, you can put on your sword. And uh, let's see, where is the sword in here? Enchanter sword. Applies a touch spell before damaging an entity. Additionally, all spells gain one additional amplify augment on the last effect in the spell. Apply a spell at the scribes table that does not contain form, such as ignite, extend time. Cool. Um, so that's pretty neat, right? So we can apply the thing before it does the damage. Yeah. So if we wanted to like just put like arm on there what do i do just this and then if i had a spell we'll make it level 10 touch arm is it shift right click invalid spells swords affect except effects and augments only such as freeze extend time so do i not need the touch i just put the harm on there i guess you don't like so if I learned freeze, we could try that. Oh, wait, I didn't, hold on. This and then create. Set spell. Okay, cool, there we go. So now he has the harm, touch harm, amplify. So whenever I hit an entity, it's gonna cast the harm spell on it. And then, right, that's gonna be cool. Should we go try it out? I feel like we should. I should be able to one-shot cows, I suspect. Yes, I think I think that's, that's a thing we can expect will work. Come here, cows, I need a test subject. Oh my goodness, that's cool. I think it uses mana for the spell, though. So, like, be aware of that. But that's not bad. And looting's getting in there, so that's also cool. Yeah? Good times? Okay. So that's looking good. So that's step one down. Now let's get ready to do... Um, let's do some uh, rituals. Okay? So to do rituals... Uh, I would like, uh, rituals are more powerful version of spells and come in semi-permanent or single-use forms. To get started with rituals, you will need a ritual, uh, that word that I can't pronounce, and a tablet of the ritual you would like to perform. All right, so let's do rituals. Ritual, ritual, ritual thingy. So I'm going to need you. So you were getting low on the thing. Told you we'd be getting low on the things. And sometimes rituals need nearby uh, pedestals. Uh, and then what we're going to want for now is we're going to want the Wilden Ritual, the, the, the Summon Wilden, right? Uh, so for that, we don't have any of those things. Are we actually low on... Does it have to be a Vexing Arkwood Log? I guess it does. All right, so let's get that ready. Can we sleep through this night? Meh. Hey, don't drop things. All right, Vexing Arkwood Log. A lot of them more dictionary. I guess some of them you need the specific one. I think vexing is purple, and I see one in the distance. So let's go get her done. So should be fun to add some other spells because harm's neat, but like yeah, it does a little extra damage. Big deal. So that's blazing. I think that purple one is vexing. Oh, look at you. You do have little berries and stuff on you. That's neat. What does this do again? It's food. Cool. And that was flourishing, by the way. Pretty sure purple is vexing. So speaking of food. Not terrible food, either. Oh, and it gives me recovery. What's recovery do? Is that mana? Maybe. Bastion fruit. Oh, that's cool. And precision mode off. There you go, sir. Vexing Arkwood. It's good to me. Go home we go. Put it all away. And we can grow those, like I said. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, and then that vexing arc wood goes here, and we've got our tablet of the Weldon. So hopefully we don't need to use that um, anymore in the future. Now, is it a bad idea to summon the Weldons in here? I don't think so. I think it'll be fine. So let's do it in here. Awaiting activation. 
you just right click again. Oh, hello, Weldon showed up. Neat. Wow, you summon a lot of Weldons, don't you? Hello, Wildens. Not too shabby. Did I mention I found a armor piece? Yeah, that's probably why I survived. <laughs> iron forged iron chest plate of gravity. Sweet. I found it. Some something dropped it out at when I was hunting at night. We're absolutely gonna need mana. Uh, regen. Look how slow it is. Man, mana feels slow. Man, that is slow. Ooh, brutal. All right. But then going forward, right, we can make another Wilden summoning tablet using, like, the spikes, right, that we just got a bunch of. Okay. And then let's make sure that we've eaten. And again, right-click to activate. And it's going to activate. And that should be cool. I feel like the model for the Wilden Stalker has changed a little bit. The Wilden Defenders are the roughest. They hurt. Oh, I almost got him. Oh, it was almost enough. Got you. Booyah. Not too shabby. Cool. See? Lots of drops, which is what we wanted. Now, the main thing I wanted was Wilden Wings, because I wanted to get a uh, leap, right? Isn't that the one I wanted? Uh, launches the target in the direction they're looking, and that's going to need an air essence, which needs arrow, feather, and Wilden Wing. So we're going to need a ooh, Wilden Wings. Uh, and what I like to do here is have a chest. Okay. That will hold all my stuff. Iron. And then I think my dirt went into my thing. Okay. And then feather. Actually, no, I didn't want to put those three away. Feather and arrow. Okay. Bing, bang, boom. And then we put that in there. Speed it up because dire impatient. Oops. And then you should get your air essence. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to learn a new spell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this guy and we're going to search for Leap, which is the first spell I like to get because it's a fun one. When we select it, you're going to see the items you need floating above the table. It also takes experience out of your player. So you notice I lost a couple levels of experience there. The higher the level of the spell, the more experience it costs. Uh, and you just drop your items on the table there uh, or nearby and it'll zoink, zoink, zoink them up. And then it will transcribe the spell for you and give it to you. And then you right click it to learn it. So pro tip, every time you learn a new spell, uh, you get more mana. So more spells you learn, the more mana you have, which is good. There's also enchants you can put on your gear to boost your amount of mana uh, and mana regen. And then there's items you can make for that as well. Uh, but for now, we should have a level three spell called Self Leap. I like this spell. Okay. Um, so if I cast it now, not enough mana. Rip. See, we need more mana for sure. Boy, we are really hurting for mana, aren't we? It's all the repairing of my sword that it's doing. We'll come back. All right, I think we're getting there. So uh, right click. That was not as good as I thought it would be. Uh, I think I need some Amplify. That's probably what I'm going to need. But that's also going to need a lot more mana. Why does my mana feel so low to me? It feels like I'm way lower on mana than I should be. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Uh, amplify is probably what we're gonna need, right? Additionally, additively increases the power of most spell effects, can increase the harvest level of break and increases the damage of spells. Uh, you need three levels of experience to do this and you need a diamond pickaxe uh, for it to work. So let me go home and get some levels. 
Okay. And then we should be good to do amplify, select. I'm gonna try dropping the partially broken pick because I love doing that. <laughs> and uh, and then, why not, right? And then I get amplify, sweet. And then I can um, augment my leap spell with amplify and that will make it do more. I can do the same with harm, for example, my projectile harm spell, if I throw a few amplifies on there. I guess it's telling me how much mana I need to cast the spell, so it's not gonna let me put too much on there until I get more of it. Fair enough. Okay, uh, so amplify, leap, and self. I guess that means it's gonna cost too much. Really? Not enough mana. Okay, fair enough. Is that how much mana I'll have left after I cast it? Or is that how much mana it's going to use to cast it? I think it's still repairing my, my sword here. Let me put you away for a sec. I want a full mana bar. All right. Not bad, but definitely, definitely need more mana. So how about we wrap up the episode here, come back next time, and figure out what we can do to get ourselves some more mana because we're going to need a lot more. For now, Delta, I sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.